calculating discrete convolutions. We start with a property of a Fourier transform. If we have two functions, f and g, and I convolve them, so that's what this little asterisk notation, we're convolving f and g. And if you remember what convolution is, we're sort of sliding one function across the other, we're multiplying them and integrating that multiplication, and we're doing that point by point. It's a rather complicated operation to calculate. Well, it turns out if we can calculate the Fourier transform of F and the Fourier transform of G, it's just a point by point multiplication in Fourier space. So in fact, if we wanted to calculate this convolution, we could just Fourier transform both of those functions, do the point by point multiplication, and then inverse Fourier transform, and we would have the convolution. So that's exactly what we do for the DFT, and there's a similar thing. Now we have two sampled functions, f and g, that we would like to convolve. Well, we can calculate the DFT of the functions f and g separately, do a point-by-point -point multiplication, and then an inverse DFT, and that is the convolution. And in fact, I'll mention this is a circular convolution. So as we're convolving, we're sliding one across the other. As it sort of leaves the right-hand side, it re-enters the left-hand side. It's kind of a... Uh, uh, periodic convolution. So if we don't want that, well, then we need to pad our function with enough zeros on either side that the, the fact that it's a circular convolution doesn't enter into this. So that's what we're going to base this on. So we can do convolutions with a DFT. Here is a really neat application of this. So what we're looking at is the is an English dartboard, and I've created an array and I've filled it with numbers that represent the score that a single dart would score if thrown at the board and hitting in different places. So, for example, if a dart lands here, you would score 60 points. Center bullseye is a 50 points. The outer bullseye is 25 points. And there's different numbers all the way around. Along this inner ring, it's a triple value, whatever that number value is. And around the out, it's the double value of whatever the value is. And the numbers are arranged rather randomly so to sort of statistically distribute the point values. Like we wouldn't want all the big numbers up here and all the little numbers down here. So they're sort of randomly distributed. So the question is, if I were to pick a spot on that dartboard to aim, what would be my average score? How do I do that? And that's seemingly rather complicated. Well, here's a real easy way to do it. Let's say I set up a piece of paper and I aim at a point and I throw, let's say, 100 darts at that point. I can fit my throwing accuracies to some kind of statistical distribution. And we call that a probability distribution function. And it's Gaussian-ish. And notice this is a little bit sort of ellipse looking. That means I'm a little bit more accurate left and right than I am up and down. And that's pretty normal for a dart thrower. But this represents my accuracy. So given that accuracy, what, would, what average value would I score? Let's say if I aimed right here, given this accuracy. Well, the way that works is I would take this probability distribution function and I would put it right over top of the point that I'm aiming. I would then do a point by point multiplication of the dartboard and that probability distribution function with the PDF, the probability distribution function centered there, and then add all of that up. And the number I'm left with is what I would average. Now notice how small the numbers are here. That's because if I add all of this up, I will get one. And that's important so that when I do this point by point multiplication, and then add it all up, I'll get a meaningful score number. And so in MATLAB, here's how you could calculate this probability distribution function, given your accuracy uh, up, down, and left, and right. Okay, so now let's say I want to know what my point score would be if I aimed here. Well, I'll do this point-by-point -point multiplication and add it up here. Now what if I aimed here? I'll do a point by point multiplication and add it up with the PDF centered here and here and here and here and here. In fact, I would raster through this whole thing, doing that over and over and over and over. And that is the definition of a convolution. So that's exactly what we need to do. We need to convolve this dartboard function with our probability distribution function. And when we do that, we get this really cool plot. 
And the number values here, the color corresponds to a number, this would be what I would average aiming at every point on the dartboard with my throwing accuracy. And so right away, I know, given my accuracy, this is probably the best place for me to aim on the dartboard, which is somewhere over right around here. And that's interesting because as my accuracy changes, the best place on the dartboard to aim can change. So how was this done? How is this convolution done? Uh, very easily, in fact. So what we will do is we will do a two-dimensional FFT and of course an FFT shift on our PDF. We multiply it by a two-dimensional FFT of our dartboard that we built over here. And then once we do that, we will inverse FFT that point by point multiplication and then just take the real part because there may be a small imaginary noise. So we get rid of that. And that's it. Just these two lines of code created this. These other three lines of code show that. So in two lines of code, we did what is seemingly a very complicated mathematical thing. So a really cool application of doing convolutions. Here's another area that I use a lot, and this is for blurring things. So let's say I have a, a, a square wave function here, and here's one way I could create that in MATLAB. Now I want to smooth these edges. I don't want them to be so discrete. So I would like to blur that. Well, the next thing I'll need to do is create my blur function. And I'm essentially going to want to take every point in this function and blur it according to this. And so how do I do that? I do that with an FFT. And the result is something like this, where I've blurred my square edges. And it's just two lines of code again. I am doing an FFT of my original function. I'm doing an FFT of the blur function and, of course, an inverse FFT shift on it because it's starting off symmetric. And so I need to do the inverse FFT on it. So now I've done this point by point multiplication. So I inverse FFT and then just take the real part to throw out whatever kind of imaginary noise there might be. And that's it. So F2 is my blurred function. Now I can do a very similar thing with the FFT2, a two-dimensional FFT, and I can blur two-dimensional objects, three-dimensional objects. I've done all of that. I've not blurred four or five-dimensional objects, but it could easily be done. So I use this a lot in electromagnetic simulations to sort of um, blur and smooth boundaries. Uh, really useful thing to do.